Investigative journalist Annabel Hernandez has weathered attacks and threats to her life for doing her job as a journalist, digging into corruption. I have lived in involuntary exile since 2014 because the Mexican government has not had the capacity of the state to protect me. With eight journalists killed so far in 2022, families of victims and international bodies are saying enough is enough. What it means is that we do not have rule of law in Mexico. If we had rule of law, the killers of journalists would be in prison. But in 98% of cases, it's not like that. Organizations like the Committee to Protect Journalists say a big part of the problem is that organized crime has corrupted local and state governments. The existence of organized crime in the vast majority of the regions and states in Mexico, their collusion with public officials is extremely important because it means that journalists who are uh, not only extremely vulnerable to tax uh, constantly have to deal with very strong power players who are willing to use deadly force against them. The Press Relations Office of President Andrés Manuel López Obrador told VOA that progress is being made in the eradications of impunity in crimes against journalists. Action is being taken against suspects in at least six of the cases from this year, the statement says. But critics of the government response say that's not good enough and are addressing the violence through a people's tribunal on the murders of journalists. The tribunal is set up by legal and media rights experts as a way to push for accountability in cases worldwide. In April, the tribunal came to Mexico City to hold hearings on three cases where prosecutors say the state had direct involvement or was negligent in securing justice. One of the cases is that of Miguel Ángel López Velasco, a journalist from Veracruz, killed alongside his wife and son in 2011. I think that Miguel, like many other journalists, was isolated, trapped in his own duty, in his own sense of duty. I am sure that he knew perfectly well that what he was doing was dangerous, but nevertheless, he prioritized the interests of society. Now, more than a decade after his death, the tribunal is trying to raise awareness about the deaths of Velasco and other journalists. Several aspects that we want to highlight in this process. First, the human tragedy and the brutality of the murder in which we must remember that this journalist, Miguel Ángel, was murdered with his wife and son. The tribunal doesn't have power to prosecute anyone, but instead works to highlight the circumstances of killings and raise awareness. The hope is that by keeping these cases alive, the tribunals can begin to build an environment where journalists can be a bit safer doing their jobs. For VOA News, Erika Grote, Mexico City.